So this week on the channel we're going to get back to nature and do some antrotypes with mushrooms. If you like to learn and be inspired, join me on a quest of creativity. Explore film, alternative processes and digital. Please subscribe and hit that notification button to get the latest videos every week. Before I start, I need to make a disclaimer. Mushrooms can be fatal, can be deadly. Please know what you pick, be 100% certain. I am not a mushroom expert. This video is about picking mushrooms for art. There is some information and knowledge in here. But as I said, please know what you pick. Every year in Austria, people do get mushrooms as simple as the parasol mixed up. And there is other deadly mushrooms. Please know what you pick. Now let's begin. Uh, kind of an unusual thing. Usually you do antrotypes with flowers. Uh, but I've been experimenting with, with mushrooms. Um, basically there's different techniques. You can use alcohol or a bit of water. Um, it depends on the mushroom to extract that kind of the, 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 um, the dye or the color from the mushroom. One thing about mushrooms are they're very versatile and there's so many different types. Whether they're edible or non-edible doesn't really matter when you're making antrotypes, of course. Um, there's also the possibility to dye uh, wool. Um, there is quite a lot of research done on that and then there's also possibility to use mushrooms to make a type of leather. So mushrooms are very flexible, uh, incredible things. Um, they're basically the fruit of a underground system and it all works in symbiosis with, with, with nature, with the trees. So different trees will have different types of mushrooms. Like the larch here has its own larch uh, balete and that's kind of a yellow mushroom. And I've used that um, to make antrotypes. And I use also what's called a parasol. And they grow on kind of the edge of the forest are in open areas. They like kind of open areas and that's where you usually find them. And they come a little later in the season, usually here in Austria, around sometime in August. Very good to eat. Um, but the best part of those is the stem. That's where the most, the, the best part of the dye you'll get. Um, so I've done antrotype on that as well. So that's a great one because you can just pick that and they grow to about, the, the caps go to about 30 centimeters by that size. So you take the, the, the stem out and you chop that up really finely and you add some alcohol to that. And then you, for the top, you eat that. That's really good. And they should be really fresh. Um, other mushrooms don't work so well for antrotypes, like the, the porcini mushroom, uh, that's just best to eat. But other ones like the, uh, the, brown, the brown roll brim mushroom, if I got that correct, uh, they were edible for a long time. What does that mean? Basically, they discovered in the 1950s uh, after eating uh, quite an amount of them that a certain uh, that a certain poison would would actually develop in your system and would actually would be you know fatal so they're considered non-edible um, they're quite popular in this forest and they're also very good for making antrotypes and as I said this is pretty much an experiment and I don't think anybody else is doing antrotypes with fungus or fungi so Let's go and discover what we can find today. One thing about mushrooms are is that they love to grow in the same place. And here we have a whole heap of chanterelles to be collected. And they go on and on and all the way down, down the valley and a couple over there and more over here. So there's loads of them. Now, this is a secret place. I don't tell people where my mushrooms grow. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll be gone. Let's go and pick some of these beautiful chanterelles. Wow, look at those guys, huh? So as I'm picking away these mushrooms here, these beautiful chanterelles. Um, yeah, alternative photography. Something I like to do from time to time with cyanotype, uh, Van Dyke Brown, anthrotypes. Uh, I've done a bit of salt paper print and a bit of wet plate, but nothing I'm no expert in that. Uh, Borat uh, Peter Lin, if you check out his channel, he's just, he really is the expert on carbon printing and uh, uh, wet plate, incredible. 
and he's, he doesn't live too far from where I live. He lives down in Slovenia over the border. So I'm down south of Austria, uh, near, near Graz. So another thing about mushrooms are, is that you can do kind of a print with a mushroom. So I'm going to show a few pictures of a few mushroom prints that I've done, are what they're called spore prints. And that's really fascinating and very simple to do. You just get the cap of a mushroom and you just put it on some black paper uh, and then put something over it like a cup or a bowl and just wait maybe 6 to 24 hours. And then all the seeds will come out from the actual cap of the mushroom and be left on the paper. And usually that will make a beautiful pattern. And this is a really good way to identify mushrooms, but it's also an art in itself. And it doesn't matter again if it's edible or non-edible or even poisonous. And one of the mushrooms that I have here is extraordinarily um, deadly. So this is a print from that mushroom. And it gives you an understanding not to be frightened of them, but to understand you know, uh, that mushrooms are part of nature and they, they function with, with the trees and w with whatever environment. They have a use, they have a purpose. They're not, they're not here to be all eaten, but some are definitely really good to eat. But this one in particular is one that you need to be very cautious about, but it's important to educate yourself and be able to identify uh, which mushroom is what and not to be scared about it. So no mushroom video would be a mushroom video without this guy. This guy is the Flyacker, or the Fliegenpilz in German. And this is not something you want to eat, because this is not good at all. It probably won't kill you, but it will make you very sick. Now I know in some parts of Russia they do eat this mushroom, but the concentration of the actual acid that's in this, in this part of the world, will make you not very well. Beautiful to look at, absolutely. Um, can't do very much with this guy as an antrotype and certainly not edible. So let's just do a little bit of a close-up of that guy. So I'm just gonna take the camera off the tripod here. Isn't that a beauty? Now, there's another rule, a little secret that I'll let you into. The Austrians believe if you find one of these guys, there's gonna be a Steinpilz somewhere. Now a Steinpilz is basically a sep are a porcini, as the Italians like to call it. So I really know most of the mushrooms by their German name, so I have to kind of look up what they are in English. And that's part of the culture here in Austria. People will talk about what mushrooms you collect and will you be going schwammel soaking? In other words, will you be going looking for mushrooms? And that's part of uh, everyday life in the mountains in Austria. You need to really use more than just one book to use a couple of books, maybe three books and in something on the internet just to narrow down which mushroom is which. Because even when you have pictures of a mushroom, you can never be 100% sure until you actually see it in the wild. So it's pretty straightforward to make an antrotype from a mushroom. Now I've prepared several papers here using some alcohol and in the picture here I have some large balletes and that I've chopped up and I've actually just left in some alcohol for about half an hour to make a print from a negative. And it's actually a picture of the mushroom that I print out and I do a contact print on this paper with the emulsion once it's dry. Now here's the same again. This time I'm extracting from a parasol mushroom. A little bit different, I used the stem, I chopped it up, I put in some water because it was so dry and make it a bit moist, and then a little bit of alcohol to extract the juices, and then print again a picture of the mushroom on a contact print. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative and gives you some inspiration to go out into the forest and discover what you can find, whether it be spore prints, are doing some antrotypes, are discovering new varieties of mushrooms that live in your forest. Let me know down in the comments what kind of mushrooms you pick and what kind of art uh, that you make. Thank you for watching 
and if you haven't already subscribed please do subscribe and don't forget to hit that little notification button and I hope to see you on the next one. Goodbye.